her tales of an army so big affected Europe forever. These tales soon turned into stories. Stories of an empire that was known for having one of the most organized and effective armies in the world. This was a Roman Empire. Today, I'll be talking about the Roman legions and why they are so effective in the ancient era of Europe. The Roman army had up to 30 legions, and in these legions were the legionnaires or cohorts in other words. These were soldiers who were usually a Roman citizen that was under the age of 45. The Roman soldier's primary equipment was a shield and sword. The shield they used was a scuntum or scutum, which was shaped as an oval and much larger than the normal shield they would see in a typical Spartan movie. The shields helped improve on Greek tactics and helped create new formations like the testudo, which created a box formation shielding every side of the unit from incoming projectiles. This was supposed to manipulate the turtle or tortoise. The sword they used was a gladius, which were short swords which made it easier to give quick stabs to the enemy and then hide quickly behind the scuntum. As a weapon for long range, the soldier used a pilum, which was a medium length throwing spear. Right before hand to hand combat, they would throw the spears which would stagger the enemy, giving the Romans a slight advantage in battle. You could only be a legionnaire if you had Roman citizenship. If you weren't a Roman citizen, you were probably a Roman auxiliary, whose job is to defend the legion by fighting in front or at the side of the army. The auxiliaries were usually recruited from tribes conquered by Rome or allied to Rome. The auxiliary was paid less than a legionnaire, but if they served 25 years in the army, they were granted Roman citizenship. Once a Roman citizen, you could become a legionnaire and after that, maybe even join the Roman cavalry. The Roman cavalry, 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 I don't know how you say it, were Roman soldiers on horseback and thanks to the horse's speed, it provided faster flanking and could also be used for shock charging which will make the enemy stumble out formation, which often create confusion in enemy ranks. This gave the Romans a huge advantage over the enemy forces. Consequently, many ancient battles were won or lost, depending on their cavalry. But the cavalry wasn't the only reason why the Romans won many of their battles. Nah. How are you going to infantry a city, or fight on the sea? Cavalry did not help in every battle, but instead artillery did. Sometimes. There's a city called Carthage. It was one of Rome's biggest competitors. Each empire wanted control of the Mediterranean Sea, and so they fought for it. Hannibal tried to bring his army of Carthaginians and mercenaries to Rome's gates, but his equipment did nothing. Once Hannibal was far away from Carthage, Rome then brought their army of legions to the gates of Carthage, where they burnt the city to the ground with the help of the Onager. The Onager was a Roman capital that used torsion which would generally twist a rope to store energy for a shot. The capital would usually hold a boulder but sometimes the Romans would use anything that could kill a man. They even loaded it up with diseased animals or human body parts. The Onager was also used for breaking down walls but sometimes the Romans wanted to stay preserved. So the Romans would create a siege tower which was a huge moving tower plated with metal or wood. The Romans would push this tower towards a wall, and then the tower would drop a bridge onto a wall. Then, the wall was flooded with eager Romans, ready to shed blood for Rome. But many ancient wars were fought on the plains. That's when the Romans bring out the ballista. The ballista was pretty much a giant crossbow that would fire a rock, or maybe a spear. This would usually lead to sudden death, and like the onager, the ballista used a torsion, but with no levers. Now that you know the siege equipment and all the equipment and soldiers that they use, I'm not to go over the archers because you should know that. Let's go over the legion. The poorest in the Roman legion would probably be the velites. There would be 1,200 velites and they would usually be the ones that were the javelin throwers. The first line were 1,200 testades. They were the younger soldiers and these were the ones that wanted to prove themselves in battle. That's why they were the ones that went first. The second line was the uh, Principates, and these guys were the richest soldiers, meaning that they would probably afford better equipment. The next wave of soldiers were the Triari, 
and these were the veteran soldiers. These soldiers you had spears because if you're in the older legions, you would know that the old Roman army mostly just used spears. Then in front, you would have 600 cavalry. The cavalry aren't going to be the first to attack, but they're more the guys that like scout or just sit aside and wait for the best time to strike. They would sometimes have to fight off the enemy cavalry if needed. Once the army is together, is an estimated total of 6,000 troops. Now you would be thinking that it would be really hard for the commander, or legatus, to command the whole legion. Well, each group of soldiers were trained to act as one unit, and to keep the group together, they have a standard bear who was heavenly protected by his fellow comrades. The standard bearer's job was to hold a pole with badges on the pole, telling what legion the unit is in. Then, you have a second in command, so if the leader dies, um, the second in command would take his place. Lastly, you would have the leader, or centurion, of the unit listening to the legatus. If he was to fail, well, let's just say that for like a later time, because I think I'm running out of time for this video. So, that's the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. And, yeah.